selling is a marketing job where selling a car gets in the way. So the way I worked it was that I could go and I used to put a couple hundred hours a year on my boat when I was young and single while selling enough cars to do what I was doing. And the, when I left work, it wasn't because my shift was over when I was a salesperson, I left work when I had 10 appointments in front of me. And if I could get it, if I had eight already and I only had to fill in a couple and it took me a couple hours of calling old owners or orphans or, you know, whatever, uh, or referrals, then I could leave in an hour or two. But if it took me 10 more hours to get the one, I left when the job was done, not when the clock rang. Right. And what was interesting is people used to say, of course, I went from sales to management. And I'm sure you heard this too when you're trying to train. But Jeff, that's you. I can't do that. They'd, they'd make it a talent thing. And it used to make me crazy because, I mean, over time, you do something enough times, you hit enough golf balls, you throw enough free throws, whatever, you're going to get better at it. What I was good at doing was creating a volume of opportunities, which ended up making me good by accident later. But I really wasn't, if you looked at all the opportunities I had, I wasn't the best closer on earth. I was just phenomenal putting opportunities up and getting yeah. another chance and another chance and another chance, which of course developed into skills polished later. So I agree with you. And in, I was in the exotic car business for a while. So when I was running this Cadillac, Landover store, we picked up the Rolls Bentley franchise, which is really interesting because the the Rolls franchise was owned by a buy here, pay here <laughs> lot mm. that we obtained. So buy here, pay here and Rolls Royce. Wow. So they sold one car over the three years they had it. We got the franchise cheap and I wasn't interested in it at all. I was just in the middle of taking this Cadillac store from number 286 to number one in the Southeast and some months number one in the United States and doing a little something with Landover. And I didn't want to learn about etch glass and flower vases on the B pill. I, I didn't want to learn it. Like I wasn't interested in it. I was trying to get volume out of this store. But what I found was that when I went into Rolls, Rolls and Bentley fully, because I had my first son and I told my owner, I, I wanted to work a little less as a GSM, like on a real schedule. And he said, just take over the Rolls and Bentley thing, come and go as you want and do the meetings for the managers in Cadillac. I got, a, I became afraid because I went from running what was at this point a 250 new and used Cadillac store to a franchise that did one in three years when we bought it. And in the year that we had it, we sold 15 cars. And I felt a little bit out of things to do, like a little bit low on activity. So I just started calling everyone in the world from everyone that ever got service to everyone in the Rolls Royce Owners Club to, by the way, telling everyone I know on earth what I'm doing. And who do I know that drives an exotic car? Nobody until I started calling and telling everyone I knew that knew somebody. Mm -hmm. And the first year did 100. And by the third year did 300. But we were doing an average myself, an average of 100, for real, one measured, 100 outbound calls a day. Mm -hmm. And then I would get an assistant when I had too much work that had to do 100. And then a third person that had to do 100. And it was all Here. in the dialing. So, and, and I love that we were definitely, we have a call center here. Um, so I'm clear you sold 300 Rolls Royce. Is that correct? New used Rolls Bentley Lotus, odd exotic, like the odd traded in Ferrari Lambo, whatever. You basically started out with, there were no, there were no existing sales really. When you started, you said one in three months or something like that. Was no, it, uh, no, no. The, uh, I took it over after a year. It had done 15 over the prior year. So one and a half a month. Okay. That's, that's amazing. So right there, guys, this is a sales show. I've got Jeff Stearns on the podcast with me today on the, on the podcast. And Jeff took a store that was selling 15 exotics, high end cars. And you have to do the math for me. He, he 20 X that I believe is the proper term. He sold 300 cars in, in a period of three years. It took you three years to 20 X the sales there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So guys, listen to me. You've been watching this podcast. It's our 130-something episode right here. I know I have followers watching, commenting. They'll send me messages afterwards. They keep asking the same questions. How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I increase my sales? Listen to Jeff. Follow smart people. Watch his podcast. If a guy can go in where, where no sales were and 20 exit in a market that he did not know about, he did not sell exotics before. He knew very few people that owned exotic cars and you can come in with processes and hard work. That's what everybody doesn't want to hear, Jeff. You were making 100 phone calls a day. 
they had to be pretty cold if you didn't know anybody with exotic cars. And and I assume you you found somebody and then started asking for referrals and and you can tell us about your process. But if you can sell, if you can twenty x your sales in three years in exotic cars, you have some information that we need to know about.